Hey guys, it's Purple Piggy here, and today I'm going to be talking about the polymer clay tips and tricks. So this is sort of like a polymer clay uh, beginner's video, but but anybody can really watch this if you want to know some tips and tricks about polymer clay. So first I'm going to start off with the different brands of polymer clay that are available to me. So the ones that I have are Primo by Sculpey, Sculpey 3, Cernit, and Fimo Soft. There's also Fimo Classical and Fimo Effect, but those are pretty much all the same. So yeah, I guess I'll start off with Primo and Sculpey. So these are basically the same, they're by the same brand Sculpey. And I, this is my favorite clay to work with. It's really good consistency and it's really easy to work with. And I definitely re recommend getting this. And they also have a wide variety of colors. Next is Cernit. And I really like this brand because they do have lots of colors and everything. But the clay is a bit sticky. So it's not the greatest to work with if you're just starting off with polymer clay. The next is Fimo Soft, which is pretty soft and it's pretty good consistency, but sometimes it's just like way too soft or something. So I do recommend this if you're just starting out with polymer clay. And then the classical is also a bit harder and crumbly, but I'll get into that later. So those are just the polymer clay brands you can use. I definitely recommend the Sculpey, but you can really use whatever you like. So next I'm going to be talking about all of the materials you're going to need. So if your polymer clay is really crumbly or dry, you can always just take a little bit of, of some Fimo Deco Gel. So this is just liquid clay, polymer clay by Fimo in a bottle. There's also the, the translucent, translucent liquid Sculpey brand, and I have no idea how that works because I don't have any. So you can always try that out if you want to, but this is really good to making like soups and realistic things like sauce or frosting or something. So definitely recommend trying to get this. It is a bit expensive, so if you can get it, I definitely do recommend it. And another great thing to have would be a blade, so you can just cut up your polymer clay. And this is probably one of the most handiest tools you're going to need. So you can also use a blade, or you can use an exacto knife like this. You're also going to need some findings, which I'll show you in a minute. So here are all of my findings. You don't need to have everything, but I definitely do recommend to getting eye pins. They look like this. They're just wire with a little hole at the top. So you can cut this with some pliers that look like these. So you're going to need these if you want, unless you want to make all of your charms this big, but I don't think so. So we're going to need some round nose pliers for making jewelry if you want to. So this, if you put it in your charm before you bake it, and then once you've baked it, you can you, you can make this into a charm bracelet. So you can hook this through a jump ring and onto a chain, and then you'll have a little necklace or bracelet or earrings or whatever. Then you can also do the same with head pins. Then you stick it up at the bottom before you bake it, and then you make the little loop at the top. and I don't really know how this works because I'm really bad at looping at the top, but I'm sure there's some tutorials out there on that. I'm also going to need some chain, which is pretty optional depending if you want to make necklaces or bracelets. You're also going to need jump rings if you want to make it into a charm or something. You just loop this through the eye pin or hat pin, and then you put it on whatever you want to use it. Then you can also use some rings, bases. You can just glue the Palmer clay charm on here. I also have some cell phone straps, which you just put a jump ring through the little hole there, and then you put your charm on it, and then you can put this on your cell phone. There's also earrings, which are the same as rings, you just uh, glue it on there, and then there's also the earring hooks, which you just put a eye pin through, no, a jump ring, and then an eye pin onto the charm. So this, that's pretty much all of the findings I have. You don't need all of these. I also have key rings and some other stuff. But you don't need all that, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Another great thing to have if you want to make your charms look more realistic are some chalks. And I just use these artist blending chalks. And they look like so. And there are two, miss two missing. And these are also soft pastels. So you can just shade these onto your charms to make them look more like bread or something. So here's just an example of what you can do. 
make realistic looking breads and stuff. And of course you're going to need a brush for that. And I do recommend something with a soft tip like so. And you might want to have some glue, which is really handy if your charm breaks. And you can also put some glue on your eye pin if it falls out. So I always find a use for glue, so I think it's really handy. You also might want something to roll with. I'm just using a marker. You can also buy the acrylic rollers, but I know some of them might be a bit expensive. So I just use a marker. And you want something with a soft, rounded surface like this. And you can also use a rolling pin. I have one too, but mine got really dirty, so I don't use it as much. Well. And now are sort of the optional things that you don't have to get. You really don't have to get anything, but it's also just optional depending on what you want to make with your polymer clay. So you, you might want a dotting tool, which is a really handy thing to have. You can use this for pretty much anything. You can also use a little knife, plastic knife like this. And this is really handy just to like smoothing things out and everything. You can also use some molds. And you can buy some mold putty, which tends to get a bit expensive, and then you can stick a charm in there, and then you can have a mold. And I do have a tutorial on this mold. If you want to check that out, just check the bound down down bar. And you can also buy some off of Etsy or some other online store, but so here's just two examples of that. You can also buy some cookie cutters. These are just plastic ones. I don't have that many cookie cutters because the plastic ones aren't as handy. It's better if you have metal ones. I would definitely recommend getting those because those have a sharper, cleaner cut. You can also use a toothbrush for texturing things, like if you want to make a cookie or bread or something. And don't use the toothbrush for, that you use for your mouth. That would be gross. You can also have some sandpaper, which is also handy and a little piece of tin foil. Another thing that is really handy is some gloss varnish or glaze. So I use the one by Fimo, which works pretty well. I know there's some other brands out there that you can test, but this is the only one that I have. So this just protects your charms from any dust, and you put this on after you bake the charm, you just can put a little bit of on, yeah, on your charm, and it'll, it'll protect it from dust, and it also just makes a nice shine. You can also get it in matte version where it doesn't shine. Another thing that is sort of optional would be some acrylic paint. So if you can get some acrylic paint, I definitely do recommend getting the colors black, white, and pink if you want to make something kawaii. If you don't want to make anything kawaii, you don't have to get this. So this is what they look like, and I have a tutorial on some kawaii faces if you want to see that. And another thing with the polymer clay, you don't have to get colored clay. Because I know one pack is pretty expensive, polymer clay is sort of an expensive hobby. So you can also just get a giant block of white polymer clay in any brand, and then you can paint your charms with some acrylic paint. I know some people do that. I prefer to get the color, so I just have it ready with me. But what it really depends on you of what you want to do and if you can afford it at all. So yeah, that is pretty much all of the materials and supplies that I can show you and think of at the moment. And now I'm just going to talk about some tips and tricks on working with your polymer. So if you have a hard piece of polymer clay, you can always add a little bit of Fimo Deco gel. But you can also just work it within your hands like so. And then it'll get warmer and it'll also get a lot softer eventually. I also recommend washing your hands thoroughly with soap before you start using your polymer clay just to make sure you got any dirt off. And you can also take a little bit of white polymer clay and just roll it between your hands to get any dust off before you start working with your clay. And another thing is you want to start off with the lightest color of polymer clay and then work your way down to the darker colors because that way your hands won't get really dirty and everything because I know red will stain your hands and then if you use red first and then you use some white clay your white will have a pinkish tint to it. So. If you really need to work with the darker colors first, like say for a base or something, then you would have to either wash your hands before that or you can use some wipes and just wipe them off. So another trick is when working with eye pins, sometimes when you put it in your charm and then you bake it, it will tend to fall out. So I really strongly suggest putting a little bit of Fimo Deco Gel or translucent liquid sculpey on your eye pin before you stick it into your clay. 
then it will be less tended to fall out or you can glue it in afterwards. So I don't recommend working with a wood or carpet surface because if you work your, with your polymer clay on the surface and then you take it off, it'll most likely stick to that surface and it'll just leave a whole bunch of polymer clay everywhere and it will just damage your surface. And I know a lot of people work on just a white piece of paper, which is also a great option because it is pretty easy to work on. And this way nothing, no dust or particles can get on here. But it will probably tend to stick on your paper sometimes. See, I do recommend trying to get a granite or glass piece to work on. One thing is you want to bake your charms the day you make them. And I personally do not do this because it just takes a really long time and energy to put on the stove every single day to make all my charms. And I don't make all my charms on one day. I usually spend like a week or two on some charms and then I bake them. So it's really, I would do recommend though baking it if you can the day you make them. So this is not baked yet. And if you, if you can't do that, I would keep them in a glass container or a seal tight, air, I mean airtight container or something like that so you can keep all the dust away. And yeah, that's pretty much all of the polymer clay tips and tricks I can think of. And if you guys want to know anything else on how I do anything or anything, you can just leave that in the comments below. And I might make a part two to this if I have a lot of questions. And yeah, I hope you guys thought this was helpful and anything. And request more tutorials and videos below. And thanks for watching. Bye!